Uh, good evening, this is uh, good morning, this is uh, the Passion, John 14, uh, part 4, which uh, we're going to use as verse 4. Uh, if uh, I were you, I advise that you go to part 1. If you haven't looked at part 1, part 2, part 3, and you are now just open part 4, well, just uh, look at the title that you've got on your YouTube file here, and instead of part 1, cut and paste it into the browser with part, instead of part 4, cut and paste it in, in with part 1, and go there and start. That's my advice. If you don't do that, um, that's your problem. Um, and this will be out of context. But to give some context, uh, Peter's just denied Jesus. Jesus has said, don't worry, believe in God, believe in me. Verse 2, he said, I'm going to prepare a mansion. Verse 3, he says, if I prepare a mansion, I'll come and get you. I've said in verse 2 that uh, don't get your hopes up that you're going to get a mansion because you're not. Unless you're an extraordinary Christian and don't think Jesus is going to come and pick you up personally because he's not. Unless you're an extraordinary Christian. Now that that's been said, and uh, you know, totally think I'm a prideful, arrogant jerk or so-and-so, um, you can switch it off right now. But if uh, you're passionate and hungry and uh, want to know the things of the Lord, go down to uh, part one and listen to what I had to say. And if you've been through part one, two or three, and you're up to number four, that's where we are now. So there we go. Verse 4 says, and where I go, you know, and the way you know, okay? Um, now, you've got to understand Jesus. Jesus is, um, Jesus is an amazing guy. Amazing. Uh, personally, I've met Jesus a hundred times on earth, multiple times in heaven in visions. And uh, I'd say that I know Jesus more than... Uh, one in 10,000 Christians. Uh, maybe one in a thousand, but I don't think uh, I could light up a thousand Christians. I don't think, well, um, one of my pastors has met Jesus on earth, so um, I don't know if I know another Christian that I've met. Uh, two, no, two people. Two people at my church has met Jesus on the flesh. The second, oh, Jesus in the vision on earth. The second person hadn't, but I opened his eyes and then he did. So maybe it's a one in a hundred. Maybe one in a hundred people have met Jesus. But if you know, uh, you know, maybe eight out of ten people don't hear from Jesus ever and don't talk to Jesus. I'd say about two out of ten Christians actually hear Jesus speak back and forth in their mind. And uh, if you do know that Jesus, and have talked to him back in the forcing in your mind, and uh, excuse me, I'm having a drink. Um, if, uh, if you do know Jesus, and you can talk to him back and forth in your mind, and you know him fairly well, if you've seen him in visions, or you might not have had to have seen him. It's 333 at the moment. That's when I, uh, something anointed happened a couple of days ago, uh, where I basically got married to someone in heaven, I feel, but uh, people don't think I'm deceived. Uh, when, when the ceremony was finished, I looked at my clock and it was 333. And uh, so there we go. It's woken up at um, 3 o'clock this morning and it's 333. So we've done. Uh, three chapters, almost ten minutes each, and uh, and I've had three minutes to spare. Uh, so this isn't prepared sermon, there's no notes, okay? So I'm in number four, uh, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. Well, if you know Jesus, he's uh, a guy that speaks in parables, and the better you know him, the more he, he, mysterious he is. <laughs> and uh, he often says something to make you ask a question. Uh, he says something so rich or profound or stupid uh, sounding that uh, you, it begs you to ask a question. And that's what Jesus has done here. Where I go, you know. Well, they may know he's going to heaven. You know. But uh, 
and the way, you know. And uh, that part is uh, is uh, totally impossible to understand. It certainly wasn't impossible for them uh, there, but uh, and where I go, you know, uh, they had a problem with him even dying uh, so far, and uh, don't really accept that he's going to be crucified. So there's a good chance they don't know where he's going, um, but there's a definite ch chance that uh, they don't know the way. Uh, you know, they they don't know the way Jesus is going to go to heaven. So how can he be making a statement about what they know when they don't know it? Uh, Jesus is not a liar. They must know it. Um, do you know sometimes? you know something subconsciously but on the conscious level you don't know it. Uh, for instance you can wake up with a whole lot of fear and trepidation and a sick stomach and feel something very awful is going to happen and uh, at 10 o'clock the news comes on uh, an earthquake has just happened in, um, in another country and 20,000 deaths are suspected to have happened. Uh, in the morning when you woke up sick with trepidation and had trouble uh, holding your breakfast down, uh, all that massive fear, on a subconscious level you knew something major like an earthquake and 20,000 people were going to die. You knew it subconsciously in your spirit, you knew it. But when it came to why you were sick and full of fear, uh, on the conscious level, we had no idea. Uh, similarly, Jesus is saying to these guys, I'm going to heaven, and you know where heaven is, and uh, I'm going to heaven, and I'm going to go whoop, straight up in the air and get there like that, and you know that, okay? But they don't know it on a conscious level, but they know that you go to heaven somehow when you die, and so he's saying that they know, but um, to get it into the consciousness of what they feel in the subconscious, um, he's going to have to explain that to them so they really know. Uh, you can know that God loves you, and uh, you could have read it, and you can convinced, and you can go to church, and people could interview on the microphone, and they could say, does God love you? Uh, I can tell you what, you might always have doubts whether God loves you. Uh, as many times as you say he does, and as many times as you sing. Because if God truly did love you, and you were convinced of the matter, you might actually get your act together and live the destiny he had set for you. But the fact remains that 95% of Christians don't achieve their destiny on earth. Uh, only 1% of Christians actually walk in their spiritual gifts, or use the spiritual gifts that are allotted to them. Uh, very few Christians uh, achieve any sort of destiny on earth. They just achieve uh, a hopeless, uh, a hopeless, uh, hopeless uh, living and existence. Uh, but nowhere near what they could have or should have achieved. And there's got many reasons. Uh, number one is they're lazy and selfish. And number two is uh, they haven't got any pastors teaching them the truth and uh, showing them the way. And uh, that's the fault of the pastors, but um, the fact is the pastor was brought up by a pastor doing the same thing and uh, he doesn't know any better, he's just doing the best. So people are essentially doing the best. The problem is uh, the people of God that are by and large blind and uh, so because they're blind and they have got no idea of the deep things of Scripture. They just live in the shallow things of Scripture and uh, basically don't achieve anything in life uh, anywhere near what God had planned for them. Uh, you think I'm being tough? Well, uh, do you know your spiritual gifts and uh, are you using them? It's uh, my question to you. If you don't, well, you're in a 99% that don't. I know my spiritual gifts and I walk in all of them very, very well and I look forward to walking in them further in 